Hello YouTube, WJ's Handy Dad here. Today we're going to replace the window regulator on my 2008 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. The first step is obviously removing the door panel and I have videos on how to remove everything to get to this point and I'll post links up on those. And you see my uh, water shield's in pretty bad shape but you know it is what it is but anyway uh, you want to get that pulled back at least so that you have enough access to get in there you need to remove this panel to access the regulator I'll, I'll see uh, of course I'm gonna have to put the window switch back on so that I can move the window down because I'm gonna need to access there should be rivets on the bottom of the window that hold it to the regulator we're going to get the glass totally out and basically we're going to go around removing rivets. I think there's about five to seven rivets maybe. may have to remove the speaker as well. Basically I'm just going to kind of play this by ear and, and try to remove as little as possible. There and then the motor is attached there. While I have all this off I'm probably going to go ahead and replace the motor again. I replaced the motor before in uh, that was a different video and that's when I started noticing the problem you know so like I had to replace the motor because the window wouldn't go up and down at all when I replaced the motor I notice sometimes when you push the button and it does the express down it'll go all the way down and then it'll start you can hear it grinding away almost like it's bouncing off the bottom trying to keep rolling down uh, and then the other issue I'm having is it's rolled up all the way and then you know a little bit probably over a couple days it'll get to where you can roll it up again and so you know not enough to where water would get in but it's just enough where when you're driving down the highway you can kind of hear the wind noise so I asked around to see, you know, if people thought that was the motor or the regulator, and it seems to, the opinion seems to be that, that it's the regulator. But like I said, since that started popping up when I replaced the motor, I'm going to go ahead and get another motor too, just in case, because it's it's free under warranty, and basically the labor is not going to be any extra since I already have all this part. So you can see where the rivets are and the other one is going to be behind here where I'm going to need to remove that to get to it most likely. Let's see if I can get it to hear that. That makes me think it's the motor because the motor has a, like a plastic gear in it that allows it to spin so that it doesn't tear up the motor. Shouldn't, shouldn't be doing that. So there's nuts and bolts there that hold the regulator at the top. There's the rivets that hold the glass to the regulator. Rivets on the bottom that hold the regulator to the door. Motor uh, with those Torx bolts. And then this is kind of disappointing that they did rivets on the door handle. So if I have to remove the door handle, which I think I will, I'm not going to be able to just unbolt it. So I may have to see if I can replace these with nuts and bolts to make it easier down the road. This is the power for the window motor. Okay, so it is true you can get the motor out without taking those rivets out. Which, when I replaced this motor in that video, I drilled those rivets out, but obviously all you got to do is when you undo the torque screws from there, it can pop straight back and slide out of there. You may have to wrestle it around 
different things that are in the door, but obviously you can get it out because everything's still riveted. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's bad or if, if that's, you know, that may be why it's dropping. I mean, you see, Honestly, I'm not a expert at diagnosing this sort of thing, so I don't really know if that's a bad regulator that I can push down, but it holds. And I can push up, because I've always thought when they break, they just kind of drop. <laughs> so it seems to me like my regulator is intact, but since I've got this all apart, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. And like I said, I'm gonna go take this over to the parts store and get another one because it's under warranty so I may as well all right I'm back went to O'Reilly Auto Parts definitely the store I normally go to it's closest to my house but the folks there are always nice and got this one replaced didn't even have the receipt with me but they were able to look it up on the computer so if you remember, I think I showed on the video, I'll have to go back and look now, but I was able to turn this by hand on the old one, and this one is solid. I mean, I can't turn it. So, whether or not my regulator is bad, I know that motor was bad, so glad I got this. And I'll be honest now, <laughs> it's a hundred and something degrees outside. I am tempted to bolt this back up and be done. And this is what comes inside the Dorman kit. There's four longer rivets, five short bolts with nuts, and ten shorter rivets. over that tab there. So here's the Dorman regulator. And interestingly enough, it also came with five rivets. So I may have bought that extra rivet packet for nothing. And then it also came with these, I don't know what these go to. They look like wire connectors on this side, but then they just look like plastic tabs on this side. So, I'll probably figure it out once I'm into this job. So, this kind of shows you how the regulators work. You've got the cable running there that moves this piece up and down, and this is what's connected to your windshield glass. And then the motor turns that, which raises or lowers the window teeth of the motor fit into those gears in there. So you got metal teeth going into plastic gears. What could possibly go wrong?
So this is something I didn't really think about before I started, but obviously this will help you. The rivets they give you are quarter inch rivets. So I didn't think much of it because I've got a rivet gun and with all different assorted tips on it and I've got a couple other rivet tools. So I wasn't really concerned until I tried to plug this into the rivet gun and it wouldn't fit. And then I went to several stores and nobody carries something that pulls a quarter inch rivet. So <laughs> I opted for some nuts and bolts and washers and I'm going to lock tight the back of these but that should hold up just as well as a rivet and actually it'll make it easier if I ever have to disassemble uh, drilling out rivets is messy as you saw but just wanted to share that because if you get into this thinking oh well, I have rivets and I have a rivet gun you may find that it doesn't fit your rivet gun point I've tested it when it goes up and down doesn't bump into anything and so I would say this was a success now before I put all this back together or before you put yours back together you kind of want to do an inventory make sure you tightened everything up or whatever so you have two 11 millimeter nuts there and make sure those were snug down on here you see I have a bolt and two rivets and that's because these were different sizes than this and it's frustrating when they do that but I checked the bolt does have clearance in the back it doesn't hit the glass uh, when you use bolts obviously you want to use Loctite so I put Loctite on the back of all the places that have bolts the lesson I learned here these were rivets you don't even need to mess with them all they do is hold a bracket on so you can take the motor out you can take the regulator out without messing with these three so that's a lesson learned wasted that step but you know didn't know that these three bolts hold the motor to that bracket as well as connecting it to the regulator so just removing those three you can take the motor out and then obviously if you want to take the regulator out you just leave these alone and then you got two at the bottom there make sure you've connected your electrical if you haven't already tested your window like so then you want to test it make sure it goes up and down doesn't hit anything doesn't grab on any wires anything like that and mine is working the way it's supposed to so i'm going to go ahead and put this back on, put some RTV and some tape to kind of try to repair this as best I can. And 
putting everything else back together as in all my other videos where I take off the panel and so forth. So, hope this video was helpful. If it was, appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And please tell your friends about my channel. And hopefully you learned from... I made several mistakes in this along the way. It's kind of what happens when you're learning as you go. But uh, all in all, it turned out good.